we are back. And we're back, guys. This is a special edition, the hottest ticket tonight. That's right, guys, at the T-Mobile Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ryan Garcia taking on Javante Davis. This is going to be a battle, guys. There's a catch weight. A lot of contracts involved in this bout, 136 pounds. That's right, guys. And listen, there's no titles on the line, but both fighters have, look, they've entertained the thought of putting up their purses. And Tank Davis means business, but so does Ryan Garcia. Now, just to get you guys up to speed, this is about that should have happened probably maybe a year ago uh, when Tank was with uh, TMT Mayweather tried to make this bout happen but you know negotiations they broke down they stalled golden boy and tmt they've never really gotten along in case you guys aren't familiar with the history they've uh they fought for the uh undisputed welterweight championship where uh floyd mayweather beat and took de la hoya's belt so the reality here is they've never really gotten along um in or outside the ring for that matter but nonetheless I do have, uh, I have some pretty amazing, uh, I have an amazing Oscar De La Hoya story. Uh, I'll tell that maybe in this video, maybe not. But let's get caught up at the weigh-in. Let's start at the weigh-in. How about that? So our, Oscar De La Hoya came to the podium. He was, he was on one. He was very disrespectful. And Leonard Ellerby, listen, I've never seen him that disrespectful as well. This, this press conference here was very heated and look at mike tyson there i got a mike tyson story why don't i tell that right quick guys so um i have friends that used to help prepare mayweather for his boxing matches right sparring partners they call it and we were all at a boxing event mike tyson walked in um this was a few years back tyson now he seems like a, a changed man i think he's in the best space mentally he's ever been but mike tyson walked in and a couple guys came over and they ran over to Mike. They put up their cell phone in front of Mike to take a selfie. Now, Mike is just walking through the crowd. Mike elbows the guy, knocks the cell phone. Then Mike Tyson, are you kidding me? He could secure himself. So Mike takes his elbows, clenches his fists and starts throwing elbows through the crowd. Unbelievable. Look, I don't know if that guy sued him or not, but pfft, he probably he probably did because Mike elbowed them in the face. But guys, that's a Mike Tyson story. But nonetheless, Oscar De La Hoya said at this press con, I got an Oscar De La Hoya story too. I'll tell that. Uh, but at this press conference, he made a huge deal about the rehydration cause. And I've been talking to a lot of people about that. Now, listen, I'm a former boxer. If you're not familiar with how this works, listen, guys, in boxing, there's in any combat sport there's weight classes for a reason right there's a reason tank davis is not fighting deontay wilder or anthony joshua or tyson fury for the heavyweight title because he's not a heavyweight right so there's weight divisions in combat sports to protect people to make it an even playing field so oscar's upset about the 10 pound rehydration clause and listen guys my stance on this is simple. If you cannot make the weight, you shouldn't be fighting at that division, right? So if you're concerned about rehydrating up 10 pounds so you can have an edge, you shouldn't be fighting at the division, right? So the reality here is if Ryan was fighting at his natural weight, he'd probably be fighting someone like uh, Errol Spence, who, look, I know him as well. And Errol Spence would destroy him or Bud Crawford. So listen, guys, you can't want this fight and then complain about the hydration clause tank davis is small yes he's he's strong he's compact but he's pretty small now garcia's taller he's got the reach advantage the length advantage uh but in terms of these two guys ryan garcia is the bigger man he is the bigger man so not having that 10 pound rehydration clause that could be an issue in this fight, guys. It really, really could be. Look, we're going to see if it is because Tank Davis joked around with Garcia saying he didn't even eat breakfast at the weigh-in. And look, a lot of fighters don't eat breakfast. A lot of fighters don't really eat how they want until after the bout. You know, a lot of that is just, uh, for the most part, rehydrating because a lot of that's water loss when they're trying to make, make weight there, right? They're running, they're sweating a lot. But, uh, more drama with Bernard Hopkins, another guy that uh, I've seen many, many times over the years and had the chance to speak with him. Now, 
Javante Davis, he's got to be careful here. Uh, Javante, you don't want to be talking trash to Bernard Hopkins. He's been, look, there's been no other fighter in the history of boxing to hold unified titles longer than Bernard Hopkins. So listen, you don't want to mess with Bernard Hopkins. He's really, really tough. Trust me, he's he's tough, man. Um, uh, but nonetheless, uh, let's look at the tail of the tape. Now, look, these two guys, this is going to be a good fight. And uh, I don't want to be here too long. I don't want to hold you guys too long. Let's get to the good stuff now. Ryan Garcia, guys, we know he's undefeated. Both of these fighters are undefeated. 23 wins, and Ryan Garcia's got 19 knockouts. Now, listen, guys, he's 24. Davis is 28. Davis is the older fighter. Now, in terms of experience in the ring as a professional, by far, uh, Javante Davis, much more experience. 28 wins, 26 knockouts, guys. He's, he literally stops everyone he fights. Now, Ryan has a great knockout percentage as well. Ryan's a taller fighter by five inches. He's got a huge reach advantage. Listen, guys, they, this is a, a boxing saying, right? A good tall fighter, right, beats a great small fighter. So the reality here is Garcia has the tools to win this bout. He's got the, the path to victory right very very clear path to victory but listen guys in terms of professional career javante's been in there with the much better competition ryan is still pretty green professionally but on the amateur career ryan's got over 230 fights right 215 wins but also if you take a look at uh tank on the lower level on the amateur level uh Look, Tank's got the better resume down there as well, right? He's been a uh, national Golden Gloves champion, uh, national Golden Gloves champion, right? That's that's tough to do, guys. That's really really tough to do. We also know uh, Tank Davis is a multiple junior Olympic medal winner, so Tank Davis has demolished competition all throughout his career, and we all know being trained and coached and managed by Mayweather, the, the greatest. I would say the greatest defensive fighter of all time and definitely one of the best greatest fighters of all time that's a huge plus however on the other side of things look at uh, Ryan Garcia um, look Oscar De La Hoya has worked with him in the past as well so Oscar De La Hoya was really really good really tough very uh, skilled highly fundamental and we all know Oscar De La Hoya was actually also trained at some point by Floyd Mayweather's father as well so Oscar De La Hoya has an abundance of boxing information great career Hall of Famer and um, we were hanging out one time and um, Oscar De La Hoya was in the wrong place so like I said a lot of my guys have helped Mayweather spar in the past and prepare for fights and Oscar De La Hoya look he was in the wrong place we were in the palms and that's been the home of uh, TMT for a long time and uh, this was this was, of course fight weekend and I'm hanging out with my guys and Oscar De La Hoya he comes into the palms in the wrong so he he bumps me on my shoulder because we you know we were all with TMT people so he bumped me and smirked because this was the time when I think they're, they still don't really get along, but Mayweather and Oscar De La Hoya don't get along. They've never gotten along. Um, and Dana White, he's in that mix too. None of these guys really like De La Hoya. And he's had his issues off the, off the you know outside of the ring, but yeah, he's had some really weird issues. We're not going to talk about that. There's some weird stuff he's into, but... But yeah, that's a funny story though. I'm getting off topic, but yeah, Oscar De La Hoya bumped me because of the guys that I was with. Uh, it was just a joke. It was funny games. It wasn't anything hard or serious. So, but nonetheless, guys. Um, all right, let's get to the fight. I'm gonna give a prediction. I'm getting off topic. So Ryan Garcia, guys, he's got the huge height and reach advantage. If he fights smart, he could win this fight, right? Um, now, in terms of power, Tank Davis is very strong. He's looking for the left hook, and Ryan Garcia is right-handed. But he has a fire, a fireball of a left hook. Both of these guys are going to be looking for the left hook. This is going to be interesting. Now, I don't think, I'll just be honest with you, I don't think Ryan Garcia can take the that left hook of Tank Davis. If Tank Davis lands, Ryan Garcia will go down. We've seen Garcia go down to fighters like Campbell, Luke Campbell, who that was a horrible knockdown. If Tank lands, the fight's going to be over. Bye-bye bye 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 ain't no lie um but however i think they know that and if you have a great coach which he does we know to avoid the left left hook 
I can see them circling to the right and jabbing. Just right jab, circle to, circle to the right, back out. Do that all fight, he could win the fight. Now, this isn't for any belts. It's for bragging rights and a lot of money. But the reality here is I, I do think Davis will land eventually. He's going to land. Um, most people have Tank winning this fight, but um, this I don't like the number, to be honest with you. So I'm going to give you a prediction on the round. Um, I do think if Ryan fights smart, this is an easy path to victory for Ryan Garcia. Circle right, jab, score points, in and out, avoid the left hook. Now, when Davis, we were at the fight when he fought Roley. And that's a that's a fight where Roley was winning, to be honest with you. Roley, uh, what did it go? Like maybe four or five rounds. I want to say it went five rounds. That's a fight that Roley was winning, but he got sloppy. If Ryan, as long as Ryan does not get sloppy, he can win this fight, ladies and gentlemen. But with that said, Ryan Garcia has looked worse amongst lesser competition. Um, I do think he's probably having the best training camp of his life. Will he be drained? He's not going to be hydrated to the way he wants to be. This is a catch weight. So these fights, these are money fights. When you do a catch weight fight, these are money fights that the fans want to see. Um, if, if Tank was still under TMT promotions, I don't know if this fight would be happening right now, to be honest with you. But the consensus in the boxing world is that Tank should win this fight. And he, he should. He's stronger. However, I'm not going to give a pick on this, on the on the winner of the bout. I'm going to give a pick on the rounds. I take this bout to go over 5.5 rounds. That's a pick. It's a great value. Ryan's going to be on this bicycle. He's not going to exchange with Tank. There's no way he is. And if he does that, this fight should go over 5.5 rounds. That's the prediction. I know who's going to win the bout. I know who can win the bout. But the pick is on the 5.5 over round prop. Take it or leave it. I'm your host, Get Energy. This is the main event. See you guys soon. And the winner and still.